Well, hi folks, welcome to this special summary session of my Physio's Guide to Lifting Techniques. Now in this preview, I've chosen a 25 minute section of my full 90 minute presentation. The full presentation includes uh, a coverage of ankles, knees, shoulders, lumbar spines and elbows. However, in this, this short version of the presentation, I've included a short introduction, then I cut to the shoulder rehabilitation section and the start of the lumbar spine section, just so you get a taste of some of the content available in this presentation. As a special bonus, at the end of this session, I'll quickly tell you a little bit of how you can get access to the full presentation, how you can also benefit from an additional 60 plus hours of online educational content, and I'll give you a special link at the end of this session that will allow you to try either my ptprofessor.com for personal trainers or my physioprofessor.com for um, physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteos, online education portal for a super low cost 30 day trial period. A little housekeeping before I start, make sure you close the door, find a quiet spot to concentrate, turn off your mobile phone, close your email program and don't check it again until after the session, take out some pen and paper, Take some notes because retention of information will increase more than 50% if you take notes as I speak. And before I, I get into the session, those that haven't met me before, uh, my name is Paul Wright. Uh, I'm a physiotherapist, a former physical education teacher. Um, I've been heavily involved in the training of, of fitness leaders in Australia and physiotherapists in Australia for over 20 years. I've lectured to over uh, 20,000 health and fitness professionals around the world. Uh, I'm a former competitive bodybuilder, so I've actually seen all sides of the, of the health and fitness industry. And I'm now involved in the technical education and business education for health professionals via my online education portals, the ptprofessor.com and physioprofessor.com. Now we hope you enjoy this session. Remember, stay with the end, to the end of the session um, and I'll give you a special link where you can use to activate your low cost 30 day trial for either the ptprofessor.com or physioprofessor.com. We'll be able to see this presentation in full as well as get access to a huge range of, of other content and materials. Hope you enjoy the session. Okay, welcome everyone to this, this presentation, Physio's Guide to Lifting Techniques and Rehabilitation. Uh, this is an interesting presentation because my, my background originally was as a, a competitive bodybuilder uh, and then getting into physio and injury rehab, so they're an interesting, interesting mix of, uh, of things. But what this presentation is all about is to give you a, a perspective on the exercises you currently use in your training programs and a, a, a range of exercises or rehab exercises that I use for, for each body part. So it's kind of a combination of how to do the exercises correctly, so lifting techniques combined with my favourite rehab exercises for each of these body parts. I'm specifically going to talk about today, we're going to talk about ankles, uh, knees, shoulders, lumbar spines and elbows. Now as we go through today, if you have any specific exercises you'd like an opinion on, um, I'm very happy to provide, I've got an opinion on everything, so I'm very happy to provide that opinion to you should you ask for it. And even if you don't ask for it, I'll probably still give it to you anyway. So, uh, um, so a couple of things with bench press, beware of the person benching too high, AC joint issue. So try to find a mid-sternum position for most people. I really like dumbbell benching, and I've always liked dumbbell benching. Even as a bodybuilder, I like dumbbell benching. I often train on my own so I can get the weights into position, I can then drop them. Great gym, gym owners love that. Uh, I train in a bit, drop them, and I can bounce. And, uh, I used to train a gym in the Eastern sort of in Sydney where the floor wasn't level. You put them down, they just roll off. Uh, just you have to grab them, so it was good fun. But the beautiful thing about dumbbells, again, you get an individual shoulder position and you can get a bit more range out of it. How much range to get. The lower you go, the more pressure in the shoulder, the more anterior shearing force, they become unstable. So a safety precaution is how low to bench. I know a lot of footballers now don't bench press any lower than one fist off the stern. That's where they stop. A lot of sports conditions don't let them go any lower than that. Now, other sports as you say, well, what if they're in a tackle and they get caught in that position? And You could argue this to the cows at the moment. It's, it's, it's how much, how much is the repetition of that position going to make the joints unstable rather than a one-off position that might get into it again? I actually like full range dumbbell, but again, you've got to be strong enough to do it because it does require a lot of stability. The lower you go, the shearing force that happen, and it can cause some instability in the wrong person. Having said that, the benefits of deep dumbbell benching, that's where the fun is. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, 
So comment on the vacation here. There's a lot of, at the moment, NRL players, pec tears are really common. We see a lot of pec tears at the moment and shoulder injuries because of these sorts of issues. Um, having said that, I would rather my footballer have an injury on the field than me telling the coach it happened in the gym. Oh, I, I would. Oh, you know, oh, that's just unlucky, mate. You know, in the game, well, mate, that sometimes happens. But gee, if you take him for the injury report in the gym, what happened to the star player? Like, we're doing heavy dumbbell bench stuff. Just unlucky, you know. I don't know. Why are they not doing some of that? That's more of a study stuff. So I think we should do more standing up and then doing more what they're doing. You could argue, you could argue forever why these, but the, the modern day footballer, bigger, stronger, faster, more powerful, multiple bodies in the tackle. You've got to have traumatic injuries like this that are watching you. And they can be the most flexible guy in the world, but if you get the, the 120 kilo wolf ended landing on your shoulder, it's gonna, something's going to happen. There's just no way around. So. Yeah, they're just wrestling so much more. Yeah. yeah. Um, so deep dumbbell bench, uh, I like it. Be careful with it though. Just be careful who you use it with. The person who gave you a history of instability, I, I wouldn't be using with them. I'd be keeping them very tight range. And I, but I'd start using my cables, let them rotate, let them do some other things that unloads the shoulder if they have a history of shoulder problem. There's a lot to be said for rotation, thoracic spine, unloading their shoulders. Very nice variation. You should hopefully be aware of the press behind neck and pull down the back of the neck issues. My rule of thumb has always been if you can't see your hands, it's not a useful exercise. Once your hands disappear, once your hands disappear from the line of sight, I think you're in trouble. Now you'll say, well, Paul, hang on. What if I'm a rock climber? Okay. Well, if you're a rock climber and you're going up a ledge, there's times we have to reach behind you to do things. But the role of your shoulder, typically in everyday life, is to put your hands in a position where you can do something with them. And invariably, we're going to see our hands to do that. I'm not going to. I'm not an electrician in the field hooking up the wires here. That doesn't make any sense. I want to see what the hands are doing. So your hands have to position where you can see them. So look around the gym. If your client is in a position where they can't see their hands, they're potentially at risk. That's a, that's a fair call. Bring them forward. There's a lot of variation. You don't have to do that. You can quite happily do that. I actually think that's a better exercise. And it's a lot easier on your shoulders. You get bigger range of motion. There's a lot of benefits in that anyway. So throw out some of the dodgy ones. Um, upright rows, great exercise. Gee, I got panned a little while ago. Upright rows went through a, almost went through a divorce with the fitness industry. I said, well, maybe it was because of the old days. Watching, old, watching Bertle Fox do upright rows. This takes me back. Remember Bertle Fox? Yes. Is it just me? Yeah. Bertle Fox used to do an upright, massive UK bodybuilder. He was as big as four houses, this guy. And he'd do, he'd do this. Yeah. Now, now, Bertle was big as a house. He could do whatever he likes. So yeah. I really couldn't care less. But for the average gym punter, you know, that, you know, a long lever, long way from the body. Um, and so then we come back to okay, a bit more conservative, um, just under the chin. Now, it, quite okay, but again, an impingement test is internal rotation and abduction. If you want to see if someone's got impingement, you put them in that position. So it didn't make a lot of sense to go into that position for people, especially if they had increased thoracic kyphosis. If they're a bit rounded anyway, and you've got a hair left last year on the deal. So we probably, maybe the industry probably settled on a wider grip position. That's, that's a reasonable variation. Slightly wider is okay. They're all good positions. Um, again, a nice exercise. Com combined movements, as long as you've got good thoracic spine extension and you've got good scapular humeral rhythm. If you're, if you're hitching, if you've got all these other things, you've got asymmetries, you're in trouble. But good exercise went that one. Um, and if you're doing machine chest presses, a couple of tips for you. Invariably, make sure the seat is high. I can't tell you how many beginners turn up into a gym and they, they get a seated chest press. Some of the gyms now have no supervision, so they turn up, look around, that looks like a look at the diagram, uh, that looks like a machine press or something, and I sit this way. And if they finally work out which way to sit, hopefully they've worked out that far, put a bit of weight on it. They don't know they can adjust the seat, so they're invariably here. Seat too low, and away they go. If you do nothing else, put the seat up. The higher the seat, the lower the elbow. Once your elbows drop, that is a much safer shoulder exercise every day of the week than that is. So if you're coming back from shoulder problems, start high, same with their wrenching. Start with a low bar position, which means for presses, for machines, seat high. Seat high equals bar low. 
which can you see that's more of a flexion extension plane than an avid adduction plane. Your shoulders every day will appreciate the flexion extension plane over the abduction adduction plane every day of the week. I'm not saying don't do avid adduction plane exercises, but bear in mind longer levers, different stability requirements, it's a more advanced progression. No fair rules, just be smart. Any other questions on any exercise I didn't do that before I show you some rehab exercise? Just a general push up. I'm always sort of telling people when they do a push up, you know, because so many times they go down and the scaffold just goes to collapse. Well, start, general, general you know. push up's a tough exercise. Yeah. That's one of my favourite exercises. Because a push up done well with, with good coordination through their scapular like human rhythm. Like that's, a, that's a really nice, this, this scapula is able to move around the rib cage well, they have good core control. I'm a massive fan of push-ups, so out of all the exercises, they're probably the ripper. But can the person control, if they get to there, as soon as they get to there, they, they need to learn how to turn on their serratus anterior and control their scapular thoracic position. So they might, they might, their push-up might involve, which is, which is one of my favourite little rehab exercises, because it, it teaches them to get their position right. Same thing if they're dominant upper traps, they go to there. If they, they go to there, what are you going to do? We're going to control that down and back. That, that, as I said, that might be their exercise. When you when someone comes up and says, oh, mate, you're doing your push-up wrong, you've got to bend your elbows, champion. Well, yeah, I'm doing a rehab exercise, mate. Yeah. That will lead you into that. Okay, so just you get a great exercise with that. I love push-ups. Rather than me, if I'm sitting, let's say I'm doing a push up, because then most of you long down, you can see what I'm doing. Um, classic, one of the classic problems with this is when they start doing a push up, elbows wide, that becomes that sort of push up. Now, that, invariably, they, they tend to shrug, turn on upper traps, and get bad position. I personally prefer to keep a flexion extension plane. So I would much prefer your push up was through that plane rather than through that plane. Now, having said that, if I, if I do it, if I'm looking at tricep as a tricep isolation, if I want to do it as a tricep push-up, that, there's no doubt that is a, is, because what am I doing? I'm, I'm getting a, a look at the biomechanics of it. It's almost a, a tricep extension. It's, a, it's an isolation exercise of my tricep. Now, my problem with that, though, is it separates my AC joint, causes a problem around my shoulder. So I've got shoulder issues. That's not great for me. I'm, my, my shoulders prefer the flexion extension plane to the abdominal adduction plane. But if I've got no pathology, I've got no dramas, I can do both of those things. They're not right or wrongs. If I've got someone with an AC joint problem, shoulder instabilities, they've brought some history with them, I would prefer they were here. I would rather they did the position where their body is in front of their hands. Do that. The further their bodies are in front of their hands, you can see the less stress through my shoulder. So I'm in that position. My shoulders like flexion and extension much more than abdominal adduction. But what's the trade-off? I'm using a bit more delt, a bit more pec, and probably not just isolate the tricep. Um, maybe the exercise Garonda dips. Oh, how old am I? Um, yeah. Vince Garonda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vince Garonda. Uh, I mean, it's me and you, know, a couple of here. Vince Garonda. Vince Garonda's an old-time USA bodybuilding coach. Might have been going like 40, 50, I think. And one of his favourite exercises was, was a Garonda dip. And the Garonda dip was you'd get yourself in that position and do a dip that way. Yeah. Same, no different than what we're doing on the ground there. That's, that's hardcore tricep, you bet. Um, but yeah, the, the stresses through my shoulder increase because I've now got a longer lever arm. I'm getting my body in front of my hand. But there's some issues regarding that compared to a, a conventional dip which still has a few problems because we're almost going past the horizontal, but if I angle my body a bit, see how the more I do that, the more it becomes like a close group push-up. It's just for horses, for courses. You just got to make sure that the problem you guys have, though, is, is choose the right exercise for the right person, but base it on their history. If I'm clear for shoulders, and I've done my flexibility tests, and I'm okay, then you've got a bit more open slap. But if you've got history of shoulders and you do this, I wouldn't want to be writing a letter that said you were a safe trainer. Yeah. I'm saying that's what you've got to come back to. What's the safe and competent pleasure you're going to do? The number one rule of medicine, do no harm.
Maybe in every minute, no different you guys. Do no harm if you be conservative when you can. Um, a couple of my favourite shoulder rehab exercises for you. Um, yeah, I almost did one of them anyway. That, we talk about shoulder rehab is turning your lower traps on. Sometimes that coordination issue. We talk about one of my favourite VMO exercises. Same thing for the person that's dominant upper trap. Let's say they're, they're, they, every time they do something, they, they shrug. I don't know what they do. You can say good day to them. I'll shrug it. Everything is dominant upper trap. You've got to try and train their lower traps. Um, one of the ones that I use is a lower trap dip. Get them into that position. And they actually drop into there. Then they lift up out of there. It's a reverse shrug from there. But it's a brain training reverse shrug. It's specifically for that person who's dominant upper trap. We're trying to coordinate some lower trap. But my point is, don't just stop there. When they start doing it, you might then start, okay, let's do one of those and try and coordinate half of one. One of those, coordinate half of one. You can do the same with your push up, like you did a second ago. Your push up can do the same. Push up plus, it's called. Push up plus is that, that. Then add a push up. Half of one. Push up plus. So you're trying to retrain the scapular humeral rhythm. What are the key requirements? They must have adequate extension. If they're like this, you buck these chains. You've got to get them into a position of normal function first before you can have any success with it. Which is why you have to do some sort of thoracic spine extension program. One of my favourites, rehab exercise. If you did no other exercise for your people that came in your gym other than this, a line of ball, and hands up over their head, and then just extend over. Stand up. Make it lie there for a couple of seconds. You can get a peg stretch here. And don't, over, don't lie there too long. Nice stretch, but again, be aware. If they are getting uncomfortable, unload them, drop their hands down a bit. So that's, again, the unstable position for them. There. But I'm just anything involving thoracic spine extension is an absolute must do. If you haven't got a Swiss board, you can lie over a bench. If you haven't got that light, roll up a towel. Lie them back over a towel. Anything you can do to increase their thoracic spine extension is an important part of their rehab program for shoulders. Incorporating standing cable rotation work, lying them on their side, doing what they call thoracic somatology. Which is where you just lie someone on your side from there and let that roll out and let that open. It's not open right out. Take that roll and open. I'm coordinate whole rotation through the spine. Coordinate your standing cable rows, seated uh, standing cable presses and get some rotation happening. Your shoulders are in good shape. What else do I have on this one? Oh. Have I said my absolute favourite yet? Probably 50 times. My absolute favourite. Talk about, talk about the number one lower trap exercise. If you know other exercises, did you go know ahead? What you got to do? This is for the classic person who's got that forward position. They've got their they've got rounded shoulders, head forward, and they really have trouble getting that lower trap turned on. Lie them over a Swiss called a ball, called a ball superman. Lie them over the Swiss ball. Now you can start out with the knees on the ground as an easier option. Put them round and almost hug the ball. Instead of internally rotating my shoulders. From there, externally rotate. Open my hands and pull my scapulas down and back. Forward. Rotate. Now, once I start rotating my shoulders, externally rotating my, my humerus, I really activate my lower traps and control my scapular position. You guys can feel that where you're up at the moment. If you sit up nice and straight, roll your hands in and down. So you get almost in that position. Now externally rotate. See what happens to your scapula. You feel your scapula drop into a really nice position. It'll round forward and then it'll, it'll open out. And, and that's that's what you want to do with your training programs. You want your person's scapula to drop down and back in stable positions. Which is why if I'm doing a standing cable row, you can see that's awful. That's a bit better. If I can open it and really get that, that pull back and down through my shoulder blade, with some rotation. See, I'm starting to get some nice coordinated motion here. 
And that's the, that's the coordination you need. Again, don't just do close group things. Do some wide group things as well. But gee, it's nice to get that pulled down and back through your shoulder. But that's, that's one of the best positions to get people into. An absolute ripper. Uh, I did towel pullovers. I'll show you an extreme exercise. This is probably not for the faint-hearted. Um, this one's another Ashton James Charles Pollock exercise, which is a pretty extreme rotator cuff rehab exercise. Um, it's a, what we call a Cuban press. And I'm a firm believer the best exercises have the most exotic names. If you know something east of block or something, it's, it's always going to be a river. Cuban press is a shrug, upright row, external rotation. So bang, bang. Two, three. Now you can get a kind of coordinated move with that, but in fact it's that th three action: shrug, upright row, external rotation. Now you can see that's not for the faint heart or people with shoulder problems down there, but getting towards a convincing rehab program, gee, there's some movement, some strength involved in that motion. Good exercise. The other one I think you need, especially if you're involved with throwers, uh, cricketers, baseballers, those sort of people, is a thing called a drop catch. Think about the thrower. The thrower classically delivers their throw and then they need to slow down their humerus. Because the humerus is in, it's, it's trapped. So they're going to roll into that internal rotation position. So they need eccentric braking of their external rotators. Because they're going to, they're going to, otherwise their shoulders are going to kick up. Classic throwers throw something and go, oh, you see them, they, they grab their shoulder and they go, oh, what happened there? They've almost subluxed their shoulder, and that's what's happened. They've thrown it, it's got out and come back in, and they get that dead arm sort of feeling. You see the cricket all the time. The outfield guy lets it go, and then he's just, oh. Okay, he's just, he's had trouble decelerating his humerus. So the exercise is a drop catch. Take it from that position, from there, drop it, and stop it. Take it up, drop, stop. Drop, stop. Because I'm, I'm, eccentrically contracting the external rotators to decelerate the humerus from continuing the further internal rotation. Does that make sense? So from there, drop, catch. And you can put various body position there as well. But it's a nice rehab exercise. Really nice before you lay down and your arm there and push down, join your fingers onto the ground. Can you show me? Yeah. Oh, we got a camera, this could be good. <laughs> I'm going to say, good, I've got a same. Push down, and then to stretch all this here. Oh, that's, a, that's a stretching position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing, there, there's a lot to be said for well, the first. Really well, you, you're stretching the rotator cuff. Right. You're stretching the muscles of your rotator cuff, which sometimes if they are tight, um, just be aware if there's one joint in your body that you need to be very careful about stretching, it is your rotator cuff. I'm not saying don't stretch it, I'm not going to step here and say it's not something you need to stretch, but one of the, one of the things you don't want is a loose shoulder joint. So flexibility around the shoulder is good, but I, I probably don't isolate it as much to the rotator cuff. Um, I would prefer you stretch the posterior capsule. If you do only one stretch for your shoulder, it would be something along those lines. So these stretches, I think, are probably the most important stretch of your shoulder. So it's posterior capsule stretching. But to actually do excessive stretching of the rotator cuff itself, I think that is a bit risky. I'm not saying don't do it, but if, if you've had an assessment done and they've worked out trigger points and other specific things that you need, that's fair enough. But you don't want to start rank and filing. You don't want to do what I did to Darren's hip on a shoulder joint. It's just the, the risks involved that are not worth um, Regarding lumbar spines, a couple of things with lumbar spines I want to share with you. People tend to get scared about compressive exercises for the lumbar spine. They, they're worried about squatting things. They don't want compression. Same thing with the knee. I think um, shearing is a much greater issue than, than compression for the lumbar spine. But I got, I got referrals from a very, very good orthopedic surgeon in St. Leonard's for years that every referral said no, no axial loading. So every referral we got, it said no axial loading. But, it, but real life is axial loading. Real life is we stand up, it's a compression exercise. I would much rather someone have a bar on their shoulders and squatting with a compressive load than lifting up something at 90 degrees to their body because that's a shearing force. So 
I understand where he was, where he was coming from. He didn't want too much compression, but life is compression. If, if you've got a neutral body position, good core stability, you can tolerate a lot of compression through your lumbar spine in, in the majority of cases. Problem exercises, though, in terms of um, the, the back, are more about bad technique. It's not so much that, I don't think there's any real bad exercises for the lumbar spine. It's more the way people do the exercise. And I think it comes back to things like, let's say they do their bent over row when they're doing any sort of forward exercise, but they straight away go into a lordotic curve. Now that's, that's a technique issue, or they do it with their legs locked, so they've got no quads control. So they're just, they're just poor techniques. People say, well, Paul, should I, when should I keep my curve? Well, I, I personally like the lordotic lifting posture. But if you're doing bent over row exercises or deadlifts, I like to keep the lordotic curve. But that's not the only way to do it. You can lose your lordotic curve and still lift effectively. Are there greater risks? Yeah. Possibly, but there's a trade-off. If I'm, if I'm doing a bent over row and I keep my curve, can you see the bar has to be a certain distance away from my centre of gravity? Well, I hope you enjoyed that preview session of a physio's guide to lifting techniques. So, what to do now? Well, you obviously have to keep learning and growing, but we know that takes a lot of time and effort. So to make it faster and easier to stay up to date, you need a training system that you can put into place immediately. Well, that's why I developed these online learning portals. I mean, in my health business, I began recording all in-services seminars and presentations my team and I gave. I then invited a select group of high-profile educators to add content to these programs to give an even bigger range of content. The result was these two incredible online training resources, one for personal trainers at theptprofessor.com and one for physios, chiros, osteos and other allied health professionals at physioprofessor.com. So what content is in these programs? Well there's the full 90 minute version of the preview session you just watched. I've also included all nine of my current technical DVD range including core stability and the better back program which was the major project for my advanced diploma in business management and the program includes all manuals client handouts marketing materials to start your own better back program immediately there's my knee injury prevention rehabilitation session for health and fitness professionals my shoulder injury prevention session we've got a lumbar spine injury prevention and rehab my, my advanced resistance training exercise presentation where I talk about the best exercises why most programs don't work and the facts about training success there's a presentation on ineffective exercises which is two hours of the worst and most ineffective exercises I still see being done in a lot of training sessions and rehab sessions today the program also includes my rehabilitation core conditioning and personal training using the Swiss ball session there's weight training for women. We've got other mentors involved as well. My good friend Ashley Jones, did a, who was an incredible conditioner, he was a strength conditioning coach for the for rugby league and rugby union, formerly with the Newcastle Knights, Parramatta Eels, Canterbury Crusaders, the New Zealand All Blacks. And he's one of my personal weight training mentors. Did a fantastic presentation on bigger, stronger, faster strength and conditioning for rugby league and rugby union. And that's a great session for all personal trainers and sports trainers and physios. He also did an extra session for me on speed, fitness and injury prevention for netball, basketball and volleyball because he was heavily involved in the Sydney Kings and the National Basketball League. And we've also just recently added a great new session he did, Building the Physically Dominant Rugby Player, which outlines Ashley's latest three-phase approach to conditioning and injury prevention for elite players. Now these sessions are all essential for all personal trainers, physiotherapists and allied health professionals involved in the rehabilitation and conditioning of active people. We've also got some other great mentors on the site. We've got Trish Wisby Roth, one of Australia's foremost sports physiotherapists and rehab experts. She prevents session, presents sessions on uh, core stability, grading exercise progressions, and sacroiliac joint rehab. We've got Dr. Michael Jamison, the former sports physician for the Australian Wallabies, which uh, in a great session on emergency injury management, diabetes, heat injury, dislocations, asthma. And we've got Adam Floyd, a West Australian-based physio lecturer in injury rehab. He talks about shoulder injury. Great sessions. Some other mentors. Physiotherapist Tim Keeley, posture expert and physiotherapist Francine St. George. Well-known personal training educator Ian O'Dwyer. We've got sports biomechanist Jason McLaren. Talks about running biomechanics. Rob Donatus, Craig Allingham, Terry Kane, Jason Bradley, Brendan Wright, Merrin Martin. And mentors are out all the time to the program. So there's a huge range of experts on the site. 
There is also over 60 hours of content broken down into 30 subject areas. There's sports conditioning, rehab, uh, pelvic stability, functional movement, advanced exercise rehab, um, gap screening, injury prevention screening, the Better Back program, sports medicine, massage, taping, gap stretch, lectures for the general public. There's a core program, which is a great orthopedic rehab program for, for personal trainers and for physiotherapists. Women's health section, spinal alignment, ankle and foot assessment. The, the list just goes on and on. And you'll see all those, si all those uh, listed in the sites. I'll tell you in a second. Membership also includes all materials and manuals to start your own Better Back program. And there's a huge range of client exercise sheets and handouts you can use for your clients as well. Both programs also have access to a, a forum. There's a personal training rehab forum or a physio forum. And you also get your own personal education diary, which tracks you and your team's progress. Australian physio uh, personal trainers also get 15 CECs for every 30 hours of education they complete on the program. What others have said, my team believe this is an incredibly, extremely useful tool, especially for us folk in the country. Again, online education, it's just easy. You learn in your own time. So it's a, it's a great resource. The videos have been extremely useful for me with injury prevention and rehab of my personal training clients. Again, great for physios, great for personal trainers. So how much is it to join these great programs? Well, the ptprofessor.com for the personal trainers. You can get a single user limited access license for only 39 Australian dollars a month or a one to three years of full access license for 69 dollars a month and you can see when you get to the side the breakdown of what you get to see with the limited or full access program for physioprofessor.com there's a one to three user license starting at 69 dollars a month with more options for larger practices as well However, as a special bonus for watching the preview session you just watched, you can test drive either of these programs for a special trial offer price, but you must use the link below to get the special 30-day low-cost trial offer. For the PT professor, so for personal trainers, you have to use the link, the ptprofessor.com forward slash webinar offer. So www.theptprofessor.com forward slash webinar offer. For physiotherapists and other allied health professionals, you need to go to physioprofessor.com forward slash first month offer Paul. So it's physioprofessor.com forward slash first month offer Paul. So don't pay full price for your first 30 days. When you get to those sites, either the personal trainer or the physio site, you can click on the home, you can click around and find all about the program. But remember, when you go to join, you must use those links above to take you to the right page. Otherwise, you'll be paying full price. The program also includes a 100% money back guarantee. So for the first 30 days, if you don't like it, if there's something if it doesn't live up to your expectations, then contact us. We'll refund your initial payment and cancel any future payments, no risk to you. And if there's ever any problem with it, simply contact our office and we'll make it right. So take the first 30 day trial now. Don't pay full price. Go to the ptprofessor.com webinar offer for the personal trainers. Or for physios, go to physioprofessor.com forward slash first, first month offer Paul. Remember, there's no lock in contracts with either of these programs. You can cancel any time. So thanks for watching the preview, and a special thanks for all those who've taken action and joined our great education portal. Good luck and best wishes.